Shabbat Shalom, people of God. I am your sister, Pastor T. Marie from Coritus Hope Ministries, where we believe in one God, one people, and one faith. Our ministry is a church without walls. We are not bound by time and or space, and all are truly welcome here. I want to let you know that we have a couple of things that we have going on with inside of the ministry, and we would love for you to be a part of it. One of the things that we are doing is an inclusion with Temple University, and this is where our members can meet with us and we can have training on different ways that we approach the church with those who suffer from mental health. If you would love to be a part of that, to bring your input and provide value to the conversation, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at tishope.org. That's T-I-Z-H-O-P-E dot O-R-G. We also have Bible study every second and fourth Wednesday of every month and you can find that link to our bible study on our website as well i'm going to give it to you one more time and that's t-i-z-h-o-p-e dot o-r-g um, we are operating on every platform that's possible that I know of. Um, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, come on and be a part of the friends and family that resides on these platforms where you can get your daily dose of encouragement and strength and the word of God, of course. <laughs> and for those who may be troubling with uh, any mental health issues, any traumatic experiences, uh, those who may be suffering on a scale that they feel like they simply just need someone to talk to, we are here for you as well. On our website, you'll be able to see all of our pastors who have been certified in Christian counseling. And you can pick one of our leaders and um, take our intake form and select one that you would like to speak with and begin your journey to healing. We want to be your GPS back to hope. That's what we do. We're hope dealers here at Coritis Hope. So I look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to seeing you. And we also are open, open to different thought processes. Uh, if you have questions about any of our teachings here on YouTube, don't hesitate to reach out to us. If there's something that we can improve on to help encourage your experience with us, please let us know. We always take suggestions and you're always welcome to reach out to us as well. We have messaging systems on all of our platforms again, but you can also reach out to us at our website and that's tishope, T-I-Z-H-O-P-E dot O-R-G. So today, guys, I am excited about this word that the Lord has given me. Um, I believe it's a word that can definitely resonate with a lot of people. Um, it is a good story. Um, and I really believe that it has a lot of value that can be added to our life in today's time. So uh, before I even dive into God's marvelous word, because I promise you, I ain't seen nothing as good as that. Since I seen myself in the mirror. Come on, somebody. <laughs> God's word is good. It's something that we can lean on. I found that staying in the word of God and establishing a relationship with God helped me maneuver through a lot of things that I was going through personally, mentally, and emotionally. I found strength in the word of God. I found strength in the uh, moments of God when I prayed out in those times where I just worship God. God, I think one of the most important things that we should incorporate in our life, despite of what we're going through, is trying to find a way to have an attitude of gratitude. One of the things that helped me to learn how to become as grateful as I am today was working on the children's cancer unit at Children's Hospital, and that made me stop complaining about so much 
And I'm not saying that anyone should put themselves in a, a environment that may be detrimental to them emotionally. It was just something that worked for me. Um, and some of those times when I feel like I can find a voice to complain, I take a trip to the nursing home. And I just meet random people and sit with them and talk with them. And in those moments, seeing people um, in these paces and in these places where people haven't visited them in weeks and months or even years made me grateful. You know, um, I'm not saying that's a system that will work for you, um, but it was definitely something that worked for me. Uh, someone else's pain truly made me see that my situation is not as bad as I thought it was, you know, um, and that's just my truth. It's just something that I utilize and do to keep me grateful. You know, I can complain that my head hurts all day and I can go to the hospital and there's somebody with a gunshot wound to the head or someone that's getting brain surgery or someone who had a tumor found on their brain and all of a sudden it took away my need to complain. So find something to be grateful about today. Even if it's God, I thank you that I can see. God, I thank you that I can hear. You know, some of these things that God give us are such a blessing and he blesses us with it every day that we wake up with the expectation to have such a thing. But there are so many people who once had sight, who thought that they were going to see the next day and they will no longer see the sunrise or the beauty of the sky when the sun sets. So always, always find at least one thing to thank God for. And I promise you, it'll always help you feel a little better. It may not aid the entire matter, but it will definitely help in the process. Amen? Okay. So before we dive into the word of God, I definitely would like to pray. Um, prayer is one of a critical parts of being a Christ walker, a word walker, um, one who walks in the word of God, one who's in a relationship with God. Prayer is an essential thing for us. This is our communication to the Father. This is how we communicate to the Father in prayer. And that is our outward expression to our Father. And I believe that being still after prayer for a moment is our time to receive whatever it is the Father has to say. Now, there is times that I prayed to the Father and I didn't hear anything until a few days later because he spoke to me through nature or he spoke to me through a word someone had given me or a scripture that I read in Bible study. But nevertheless, we do serve a God that does answer. And sometimes when he doesn't, it doesn't necessarily means no. It just simply means maybe not right now. Maybe now is not the time for it. You know, maybe now is not the time for you to receive the answer for that. But keep hope to know that we serve a prayer answering God. Amen? Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you, O oh God that we can just come into your presence and in your presence healing can truly take place father we thank you that you've never turned your back on us even where there may be times where we've allowed our relationship with you to fall doormat you've never turned on us father we thank you that you are such a forgiving god that you do not hold to our face or throw up in our face some of the things that we've done wrong. Father God, we truly try to understand that in repentance means to ask for your forgiveness, but to turn away, to turn away from that thing that we ask you to forgive us for, to give us the strength, oh God, to not go back to it. 
Father God, let this word encourage somebody today to keep pressing on, to keep fighting forward, to know that God, you don't look at the outward appearance of man, but you truly examine our heart. So Father God, if you find anything within our heart today that does not look like you, we ask that you remove it. Sever all ungodly things within our heart. Father God, no longer give it access to our heart. Heal us, O oh God. Make us whole. And strengthen us for everything that we are called to face. Father God, let your word be illuminated today that your people may be enlightened. Father God, reach your people and teach your people that today they leave with a better understanding, that they leave encouraged, that they leave with their fuel increased by your word. Because Father God, your word is Christ and Christ is the word. So even in speaking it, we are speaking of your son. Father God, we thank you for not counting it robbery, for bringing us to this day. Father God, have your way in this atmosphere. Touch each and every life that is under the sound of my voice. Help us, Father, to grow deeper roots in you. Make us over and make us new, but give us strength to understand that the road isn't always easy. But you said, Father, there will be weapons formed against us, but you always reminded us, O oh God, that the weapon will not prosper. So we thank you that even though the trials may come, we already have the victory. We bless you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt you. In Yahshua's name, we come to you, O oh God. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Bless the name of the Lord. So today, people of God, we are going to be coming out of 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16. And it's going to read from verse 1 to verse 13. And the word of God says this morning, Samuel anoints David as king. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. We want to talk about that. I have rejected him as king of Israel, so fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you, the Lord replied and said that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong? They asked. Do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel replied. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eli and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not see things the way that you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord 
looks at the heart. And then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shimei. But Samuel said, neither is this one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are these all of the sons that you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he's out in the field watching the sheep and the goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him and he was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah and the word of God is already blessed. So let's look at this, guys. Listen, come on. Let's let's put on the glasses. Let's bring out the magnifying. Let's take a look at this. One of the things that stuck out to me, and I just want to give you guys a little bit of context, because um, as we were reading in this word, the writer expressed how Samuel was, was the prophet of God. He was the prophet of God, and God gave him a mission to anoint another person as king. Saul was the current king. The thing was, right, the Israelites in that time were trying to copy the ways of the other people outside of their bloodline. And they had kings, so they requested to have a king. God did not choose Saul. The people chose Saul to be king. He stood taller in stature. He was tall, um, bigger in, in his, his build. He was, he seemed someone better than all of them. So the people chose Saul as their king. God never anointed Saul to be their king. Now, Saul wasn't the nicest of them all. <laughs> in fact, as you read more in the book of Samuel, and I truly encourage you guys to really read the book of First and Second Samuel. Um, it is a really fruitful uh, eat. It really is. Um, but ultimately, Samuel the prophet was afraid to tell Saul, look, I got to go anoint somebody else. So God gave him a way of escape. He said, look, take a cow with you, take a heifer and let him know that you're going to sacrifice. So yeah, you telling him the truth, but you ain't telling him the whole truth. And that was going to give him an opportunity to be spared. So Samuel goes to Bethlehem. When you read in the book of 1 Samuel, you're going to come to find that this particular David that God has called Samuel to anoint is the same David that killed Goliath. Now, as we were reading, we don't see that just yet, right? But this is the early stages of David's life. Now, David wasn't considered, obviously, anything to be favored, not by his father, because when the Samuel, when Samuel told Jesse, their, his father, that he was going to anoint one of his sons as king, his father didn't even bother to pull him up out of, of the fields with the sheep and the goats. He deemed his other sons worthy. 
even Samuel, being an individual who is anointed to hear the word of God, anointed to speak on God's behalf, even misjudged himself but God even had to correct the prophet and let him know that I don't look at the outward appearance of a man I look at the heart of a man and I feel like this is really good news because there's somebody that is working in the fields. There's somebody that's working in McDonald's. There's somebody that's cleaning some toilets that may feel like you are less than the CEO. But I want to encourage you, do not count yourself out just yet. Because God is not through with you yet. Despise not the day of small beginnings. And as we read further, David, this sheep tender, this goat tender, he is not favored by his father. Samuel didn't know that Jesse had more than the seven sons, but even Samuel was misled by the appearance of people. So I'm going to encourage you to not be fooled because of somebody's outward appearance. It ain't always what it looks like. Come on, somebody. I've been in a dating round, and I'm pretty sure some of y'all have too. We grown. We've been in a dating round, and we like somebody because of what they look like. And when you got to know them, you said, hold up. You're not even my type. You're not even my style. But your looks deceived me because you look the part, but yet you was not. But the one that does not look the part, the one that does not look like the rest, the one that may not be counted as uh, favored as the rest was the very one that God was looking for. Mm. I want to encourage you today. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't let your current situation or your current circumstances, don't let this hardship that you're going through make you believe for any reason that this is the end of your journey or this is the where your story stops. See, because David had to tend to some sheep and David had to tend to some goats and David had to fight lions and David had to fight bears but this was the same preparation that David had to undergo before he fought Goliath so do not despise the day of small beginnings do not get angry with being in that small place or having to come in that low place because there was a thing about God not looking on the outward appearance of man only the flesh looks upon the flesh and is appealed by the flesh but God is all spirit and God does not tend to the flesh of man because that is the unrighteous thing about us. God looks at the spirit of a man, the heart of a man, because out of the heart flows the issues of life. God saw more than a shepherd. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God saw Christ as more than a carpenter. God saw me as more than a project chick from Portsmouth, Virginia. So, and this is not even the end of my journey. And as you read in 1st and 2nd Samuel, David did not only tend to sheep, goats, fight lions, fight bears. He even played music for the same king that he was being called to replace because he was tormented by a spirit. And this same king tried to kill him. And guess what? The further you read, my God, my God, David did not Step out of character. David did not lose his integrity. David did not yield to his flesh in that matter. He did some janky stuff though. You read on about David. And I love David because David, he's one of those people that reminds us God uses anybody. 
This is the same David that tend to sheep. And a, the prophet had to come. God told him, a prophet, to go and anoint David. David was anointed more than once. You're going to read this. Read it, please, please, please. I truly encourage you to read it. David was anointed more than once. But this is the first time that we see that the prophet is anointing him. And he wasn't even a king yet. He was anointed and still went back to the fields. He was anointed and he still had to make sandwiches for his brothers when his brothers were on the battlefield, scared to fight Goliath. See, even though he was anointed as, as king, he was still a servant. He was still a shepherd. He still had to protect the sheep and he still had to protect the goats. So sometimes when you know that you got the gift and sometimes that you know that you have the anointing, God will still keep you in that service servitude position because that is the foundation of what he's calling you to somebody get excited about this thing it is making me happy it's making me happy because many of us miss out on the opportunity see 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 david working in the fields you got sheep running up against you, goats running up against you. You got to wash them, shave them, clean them, protect them. What you think he out here smelling like? What do you think he out here looking like? He ain't on no three-piece suit. And this, uh, this, this, um, this prophet comes and anoint him. And guess what? He had to go right back to the fields. Come on, somebody. Has somebody ever told you that you destined for great things and you still flipping fries? You still shaking fries at McDonald's? And somebody told you that you called anointed to write a book, but you still working on the phones and you just still doing customer service. And somebody told you that you was going to do great things, but you are in a small position, baby. I am letting you know that it's only the beginning of a great thing. See, it is the look little places where God can do the work on you. Mm. I don't know if I'm preaching to y'all, if I'm preaching to me. Good gracious. So God calls David. God anoints David. God uses Samuel to anoint David. But also, he had to <laughs> correct the prophet now the prophet is, is is the one who is the mouthpiece of God within the fivefold ministry we have the preacher the teacher the apostle the prophet and the evangelist okay these that support that's you know the lineup for the fivefold ministry so this prophet which is the mouthpiece of God still had bad judgment come on somebody I'm just trying, I'm, I'm making a point of this because I want you to see that even those that God will walk closely would still fall short. Come on. Come on. We got a king that's anointed that's still working in the fields with the sheep. We have a prophet that's anointed that still can't even get on, the, in, on one accord with God. He uses the imperfect to do perfect things. And this is why our humility and our gratitude is very important because sometimes we can't make it to the promised land because we give up too fast because we've been in the field too long. Oh my God, my God, my God, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes we cannot make it to the promised land because you don't want to leave. You, you, you got time. Out of Egypt. Don't miss out on great doors that God has for you because you don't like the circumstances that you're in at the moment. Baby, trouble don't last always. But it is also in these hard places, in these low places, in these servitude places, in these places where you got to bite your tongue because you don't have enough authority to check nothing. Or when, when you have somebody, a boss that is micromanaging you and you can't do nothing about it. See, don't despise those days because God is doing something 
in the background. David is walking around anointed as a whole king and going back to take care of sheep and goats. You know. See, see, there's a weight that comes with waiting. And many of us, we miss the mark because the weight of the weight outweighed the weight. Don't let what you're waiting for get so heavy that you create your own outweigh, I mean, your own way out, your own plan. If God does not instruct you, please do not move. Don't move. Don't move. Because even a king had to go right back to the field after he was told he was a king. Isn't that something? A man come all the way from another land just to find, pick, look through your brothers like a deck of cards, like a hand of spades. And they he, they got the, okay, they're like, oh, I got the deuce of diamond, the deuce of spade, the, the ace. I see the king. I see the queen. I see the joke. I see the ten. But they didn't know. See, they counted out that three of clubs because he was in the field because he was smaller because he was younger but they didn't realize while they were standing there feeling proud about him themselves he was in the field being prepared for a battle that they were scared to fight mm. Woo! Woo! this thing is <laughs> hey good gracious that's gonna be the next thing i teach on it gotta be because this this thing is just rolling too good together so my, my whole point in all of this is just to remind you that yes, we got small beginners. Yes, our story doesn't always start at the top. We have microwave expectations of God because we want God to move at a rate that is astronomical. But we must remember that a thousand years is only one day to God. So what do you think six months worth of trouble is to him? About a second. About a second. Ain't that something? If a thousand years is only one day to God, we won't even live to a hundred years. Ain't that something? And in that, our little three-month situation seems like it's killing us. Six-month situation seems like it's killing us. Two years, three years, it's Killing us. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. But in God's eyes, he ain't even been going through that long. <laughs> but I also want to bring your mind to the fact that you can be anointed and not look like it. Gifted and not look like it. He said David had dark skin and pretty eyes. He wasn't describing him as well as his brothers looked. Tall in stature and nice build and all of those great things. He was dark skin with pretty eyes. That's all he said. And he was told that he was going to be king and he had to accept that. Thank you. And let me go get back to these sheep. Don't let your low place define who you are. That's my point number one. My point number two, I'm pointing at the prophet Samuel. Even though you are appointed and anointed by God, even sometimes your thoughts don't align with his. And that's a true thing. Because sometimes we become, we, we thump this Bible so good and we quote it so well. And, you know, we, we, we know uh, it in Aramaic. We know words in Greek and we can give it all, all, the, all this background and all of this context. And you can be so connected to God that he uses you and still be out of line with him. Isn't that something? And that's just a reminder that God uses the flawed. 
He doesn't look for the perfect. He looks for the obedient. You know how many times I even used to convince myself before I gave my life to God that now I'm going to get myself together first and then I'm going to go get saved. I'm going I'm to I'm stop smoking weed and then I'm going to go get saved. Or I'm going to stop drinking and stuff and stop turning up and then I'm going to give my life to God. You know what? I'm going to stop fornicating and then I'm going to give my life to God. God said, I want you today. And he called me in the middle of a hair salon and knocked me out of chair. Had me on my knees and I cried the hardest cry I could ever cry out of my life. And I'm talking about for my old drinking people. When you throwing up and that 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 is coming from the bottom part of your stomach, that it, it make that huh sound. Yeah. He I cried from down there. Because it was just simply my time. See, God don't want you to get yourself together and then come to him because then you will be able to give yourself credit for changing your life. God wants you to come to him messy. God wants you to come to him smoking weed. God wants to, you to come to him uh, uh, taking mollies. God wants you to come to him drinking, fit and all. See, God wants you to come to him and he's going to do the work in you, on you through you so don't even worry about bringing forth perfection to come to God because Samuel if you read about him he was a major person he was major and even he fell out of line with God and that was one of those things that we read today so take heart it's okay to come to God flawed. It's okay to come to God broken. It's okay to come to God with an addiction. It's okay to come to God in sin. It's okay for you to come to God and you did something crazy five minutes before you came to God. It don't matter. Just come. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is just come. Come to God. Come to him. The invitation will always be open for you to come to God. He's not a respect of a person's. He's not looking at your credentials to justify how, how much ranking he's going to give you in the kingdom or how much ranking he's going to give you in the spirit. God says, I'm looking for the one with the broken spirit. I'm looking for the one with the contrite heart. I'm not looking for a perfect man. Or I'm not looking for a perfect woman. I'm looking for who's going to say yes. Send me. Oh God. He. Send me. Yeah God you know I struggle with smoking cigarettes. But send me. Lord I know you know I struggle with smoking weed. But send me. God you know I have a few drinks. And sometimes I have one too many. But send me. He's going to perform the perfect work in you. He's going to change you in his timing. It's your yes. It's truly your yes that grants you access to be used by God to do mighty things even though you got that thing that you battle with even though you got that skeleton in your closet even though you got that thing that you struggle with that you don't tell nobody that you struggle with God uses Moses and he stuttered this very same David that we talking about he got a pregnant woman knocked up and her husband killed but God chose him God chose, Christ chose Peter to be his disciple. And Peter ran on him and said he ain't know him when the time came. But God chose him. He chooses all of our broken vessels and he makes marvelous things happen in the process. And that's what I want you to know today. Is that you're never too flawed for God. You're never too broken to be used by God. And I promise you this, because I'm going to be 100 with you, baby. 
Some of the greatest experience I ever, a, a, a greatest knowledge I've received, they were from drunks. And I'm going to tell you one of the wisest things I heard. You don't know until you know. And that sounded dumb to me when I was 19. But when you start living, and when you know, you know. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself, this is your opportunity to give your life to God. Don't worry about that drug habit, baby. Don't worry about that pill popping habit. Don't worry about drinking that lean. Don't worry about the fact that you you sleeping around. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that, you guys. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that nasty attitude you got. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the fact that you're unforgiving right now. Don't worry about that. You ain't about the wrong stuff. Honey. The only thing you need to be worried about is connecting back to the Father. That is your rightful place. It was the sin of Adam that took us out of his presence but it was the blood of Christ that gave us that opportunity yet again so today if you're ready to give your life to God all you have to do is repeat after me Father I come to you in the name of Christ I give you my life today for I believe that Christ is your son and he died for my sins and he rose on the third day. So today, I know that he's your son and I give you my life in exchange for the Holy Spirit to dwell in me richly creating me a clean heart a renewed mind and the right spirit that my name may be written in the Lamb's book of life forgive me for my sins in Jesus name I pray And if you have made that declaration today, oh honey, your slate's wiped clean. But the battle, it's not yours. So don't let the weight of the weight get you down. And don't let the fact that you know you're destined for greater make you hate where God currently has you. Because he's not through with you yet. Let the one who created you continue a great work until the day of Christ's return. Shabbat Shalom family. Take care.